So, uh, last class we were discussing the uh, analysis, uh, we started discussing the analysis of uh, organic chemicals in, uh, in water. So, we, we looked at the, uh, the process that we were looking at is say we have water, we have a water sample plus A. We, we do, we remove the A here by extraction and then uh, we also have another process, um, this is A plus solvent. And then we concentrate to make this a smaller volume and this goes into the instrument of analytical instrument to uh, we get data concentration data on that. So, we, we discussed one uh, method of this and we also looked at some standard methods um, for uh, we looked at standard methods for uh, the uh, that are reported that are there listed in the regulatory agencies uh, for the analysis of different types of uh, components in water. So, here uh, the one method that we use for extraction is, uh, is what is called as liquid liquid extraction. <coughs> And this usually involves the uh, adding of some amount of uh, solvent to uh, the water sample and then shaking it to extractions by whatever means you can bring the solvent and the water in contact so that there is efficient exchange of A between the uh, water and the solvent. So, the idea is to use a solvent that is a very good, uh, that has very good capacity to hold the uh, solute that you are interested in. So, that is a matter of experience and, and there are people who have collected this data and uh, recommend. So, the standard methods that, that you are looking at will recommend a particular solvent for the analysis of solvent or solvents, the several solvents that are applicable for the uh, extraction of one class of chemicals A from the uh, water. Okay. And uh, so, we we looked at some of the solvents. So, uh, there is no point in me giving you a list of solvents. By and large, we have uh, chlorinated organic solvents are very strong for any of these purposes, but they also have a problem. They are themselves uh, listed as hazardous chemicals. So, you have to worry about their disposal. And so, people always look at some alternative, but if extraction is the uh, main concern, then people st still use these chemicals. They are not banned. They are, you just have to take care of their disposal properly uh, if you are using it. So, one option because this is a concern uh, for using a liquid solvent, a there are several problems in using liquid liquid extraction. One is the, uh, the uh, concerns, the, the problems. One is the uh, waste management. Second is safety itself. So, while doing this, while in the process of extracting and concentration, so what we mean by concentration is you are evaporating solvent, which means solvent is coming out and it is potentially released into the environment, then the, the analyst themselves can get exposed to the solvent. Okay. So, we have to be careful about doing all that. So, in the standard methods, if you are doing liquid liquid extraction, you will also see uh, the safety uh, the methods that you have to follow for safety, safe handling of this thing which includes the concentration to be done inside what is called as a fume hood. So, I will not go into the details of it. So, I suggest uh, you will be reading some of these methods in detail. So, you will read some of it there. And um, so, there are two issues here waste management safety and third is the the amount of handling can lead to lot of errors. So, you are manually taking sample, extracting, taking out solvent, concentrating it and taking it to the instrument. All this can also lead to additional errors in sample loss in the process. So, in order to uh, 
circumvent all of this, there is another method that people use now which is called as solid phase extraction. This cuts the problem in a little bit, it does not remove the problem completely. But what this means is solid phase extraction means instead of using a solvent to extract, we are using uh, this is A plus water, we are sending the entire thing into a solid, we are sending the entire thing into a solid, the A plus water into a solid, the uh, water comes out, the A is retained on the column, solid column. So, we essentially what we are doing is we are doing another mass transfer process which is called as adsorption. We are adsorbing all A from the water onto the solid phase uh, which is usually a packed column and uh, all the A is retained here in, in, the water, in the solid phase. So, what we do is we say if you are processing 1 liter of water, a large quantity, when you send it through the solid phase and uh, whatever quantity of A that is there in the water gets retained on this on this small solid column and the water is all gone, water is go, goes through. There is no solvent involved here and uh, this uh, so safety issues are lesser. Then you take this solid phase this which contains A, A is inside here, you have to take it out to bring it to the instrument again. which means that I have to remove the A from here, A has to be removed from here in and then go to the instrument for analysis. There are very few methods that uh, people have especially at the organics that we are interested in, the direct analysis of A on the solid phase is not uh, possible, it is not easy, it is a method do not exist for it as of, as of now. So, you still have to remove it out of the uh, solid phase. So, you have to extract it uh, somehow, ok. So, this process is called as desorption, you have to use desorption to get it out. So, depending on for water usually the, uh, the instrument that we are going to be using is typically takes a liquid, uh, some solvent, ok. So, uh, one way is you send a solvent. Now, this solvent's interaction with the chemical with reference to water is very different from its, its interaction with reference to the solid. So, we are talking about here the partition in this case liquid liquid extraction, we are talking about a partition constant of A between the solvent and water in the liquid liquid extraction. In the case of adsorption, in this option, we are talking about the uh, solvent and uh, the solid phase. SP. So, this desorption you have to select a solvent because now the organic uh, the, the solid that is there on the SP column itself is, is uh, must be able to take its properties are very similar to that of the solvent you are using in the first place which means that if you are using another solvent to take it out of SP it must be really strong. So, the partitioning of the chemical from the solid phase to the solvent must be really uh, really good really uh, so, there are recommendations for selection of solvents for a particular class of chemicals in uh, from a particular uh, solid, ok. So, there is adsorption and desorption, this is mass transfer uh, uh, and the equilibrium of a chemical between two phases in these kind of systems. So, what we are effectively doing is one example is say you have 1 liter of sample, it goes into a small cartridge which contains maybe a few millig 100 milligrams or maybe a gram, a few grams of the solid and all the A is there. Then you take a small amount of solvent, maybe 10 ml of solvent and desorb it, bring it out, all the A now comes into the uh, this solvent. So, you are essentially doing the same thing what you did, so what you did in this uh, so, in, in sorry, in this, what, what you did in this, in this zone is equivalent to what we are doing in the SPE, except that we are not using a solvent, uh, we are not using liquid liquid extraction, we are using the solid phase extraction. So, the 
I have an image uh, showing that. So, this is solid phase extraction. Uh, so, essentially what we do is we have a cartridge which has a solid and this uh, cartridge then allows material to be sent through and the analyte uh, is received. Initially it is stored here and then we uh, elute it. And uh, there is a method for that, so there is a standard method for that uh, for also. So, yesterday we talked about solid waste standard methods, so one of them is for solid waste. So, there is there are a large number of methods which uh, which talk about different extraction methods. There are standard methods for extraction. So, you can do the quality control for extraction, how much is the recovery efficiency, how much is the loss during uh, for different groups of compounds with different kinds of methods and all that. So, so, what you, you will get uh, in the method you will get very specific instructions as to what is the flow rate you need to use, what is the time that you need to have, what is the purity of solvents and all that, how much of solvent, uh, how much of solvent you should use and uh, what is the mass of SP you should use and same in the liquid liquid extraction also you will have uh, for a given volume of water what is the solvent volume you should use, how long should you shake, how should you shake it, what is the RPM and all that, all those instructions are given. You can modify it whichever way you want, uh, provided you have enough uh, sufficient justification for doing it. So, the concentration, the next step is the concentration step. Sometimes when you, when you extract, you extract a large volume of solvent, this is sometimes possible that you only can use 20 or 30 ml or sometimes it is even larger. Uh, <coughs> So, in order to reduce this volume, concentration essentially means you are reducing the volume. Solvent volume is going from this to this, so which means that the solvent is evaporating. You are reducing the volume of solvent, assuming and hoping that all the A that is uh, in the system originally is retained in this, in this uh, second set also, so that concentration is higher in this case. Okay. And uh, two ways of doing it, one is if you have a very large amount of solvent, uh, um, you can use equipment that is used for it, you can use what is called as a rotary evaporator. Rotary evaporator essentially is a, a system where you have, a, I will show you a picture in a minute, but essentially what, what we do is we have a, uh, the sample is kept inside a uh, container and uh, this is kept inside a heating for a particular temperature, a heating bath or a mantle or something. And then the vapor that comes out is condensed and collected. But here we are also applying this vaporization, evaporation, and condensation to collect to recover this thing. We use vacuum. So, at a particular temperature by using a certain vacuum you are influencing the, this is equivalent to boiling except we do not boil it, we do not increase temperature, we change the pressure, we reduce the pressure and so evaporation occurs at a lower temperature. So, at, at room temperatures you have certain amounts of vacuum you need to apply for certain solvents. So, there is a listing of that, so at 35 degrees this is the vacuum you apply, uh, solvent different solvents will based on the vacuum they will evaporate. So, this is rotated, there is it is called as rotary evaporator because this is rotated, there is this portion is rotated um, and so that and it keeps coming down, the level keeps coming down. So, beyond a certain volume you cannot reduce in this. So, if you are if you have 100 ml of solvent, it, you can reduce it to say 5 ml or so. Beyond that the effect of vacuum is not felt by the uh, this thing, it will go up, condense and come back straight away, it will not, you cannot reduce it all the way. But it is a very good uh, this thing to do. People use it for various reasons, but in environmental sci sciences we do it for uh, concentration. The advantage of this method is you also can recover the solvent. 
Now, how pure the solvent is is a different question. Um, uh, you may have to check that because if there are multiple things, few things will go out, several things will go out. But it is like distillation, which means that it is the basis of uh, evaporation, the separation on the basis of the volatility of that particular. So you are influencing volatility by applying different vacuum. Okay, this is a more sophisticated way of doing it, and it's used for large volumes. But for small volumes, let us say this is only 10 ml or 5 ml, as in the case of SP. Your volume of uh, what that you extract from the SP column is 10 ml or 6 ml or something like that. But you still want to reduce it. You can't use it. Uh, you can't use uh, rotary evaporator. It's too much. Uh, so we use what is called as a nitrogen blowdown. It's very straightforward. It's very simple. The sample uh, is placed here, and you have nitrogen flow of nitrogen on the surface. So, it, it is essentially evaporating just like that. So, it is very precise. So, you, you have a needle that is supplying nitrogen from uh, a nitrogen uh, cylinder storage and it evaporates and so you can keep on bringing this needle inside as the level keeps going down. So, this will, this will go down nitrogen flow of nitrogen. It is nitrogen because it is inert that is the reason why we use nitrogen. It will not react and it also will not cause other problems in the system. They are commercially available uh, nitrogen blowdown system, but it is nothing there is no speci specific this is what it means. So, there are instruments that you can do it in an automated manner and all that. So, all that is there, but essentially it is evaporation. So, the quality control issues here are during evaporation you will lose some, you may lose some solute of your interest depending on what is the volatility of that also. Okay. Suppose you are doing naphthalene analysis, naphthalene has reasonable volatility. The solvent, one of the pro main problems is what do you call as co-solute, co-evaporation effect. So, if, if hexane, if say dichloromethane or hexane is the solvent, it is very volatile solvent. The reason we choose a particular solvent uh, in for extraction is that if the solvent has high vapor pressure, high volatility, it is easy for us to, con to concentrate. If you take a solvent which is uh, not easy to evaporate, you cannot concentrate it easily. You have to expend a lot of energy to evaporate and in the process you may lose a lot of uh, the chemical itself. So, you always have to worry about quality control, recovery of, the, of your analyte uh, of main uh, chemical is, is critical here. So, sometimes you will have a lot of losses. So, losses can occur by as way of in, incomplete extraction during the extraction process and it, it also can be a loss during this process. So, what you recover in the instrument um, is lesser than what is there in the original sample for these reasons, all these uh, possible reasons. Okay. So, these are the two uh, possible uh, ways in which we do nitrogen blowdown. For solid samples, if you are doing solid samples, I uh, will look, talk about the extraction. If you are extracting solid samples, solid samples are more complex matrices. So, you need uh, something more rigorous. You just by you cannot do liquid liquid extraction, that kind of things. You can add a solvent and mix it, but one of the main problems is solids, solid do not say. Let us take the case of sediment or so, soil. Soil or sediment, they contain uh, moisture. It will not mix very well. You are adding an organic solvent, water is there, it will not mix. Okay. So, you need to, uh, the solvent must be sufficiently a mixture where it, it can allow water. That is one way of doing. So, sometimes people use solvent uh, is a mixture. Say for example, we have a mixture of hexane and acetone. Both of them are good organic solvent, but one of them is soluble in water, one of them mixes with water well, other one does not. Hexane does not mix well with water, but you still need a phase, but acetone and hexane mix well. So, the water will get into a little bit of acetone and all that, all that will happen, but it is not important for the, but what it, uh, what this will help is that the solvent 
and the solid matrix can mix well. We need good mass transfer. That is one. Second is they will also add. We also add a drying agent. So if there's moisture, we add a drying agent. Uh, something like we have we add anhydrous uh, sodium sulfate not sodium sulfate this is calcium sulfate sodium sulfate only which will absorb moisture it will pick up the moisture it will absorb moisture and uh, the this this sample will become more powdery and so easy for us to do mass transfer so shaking so when you do when you have soil or sediment so essentially what we do is we take we take some sample solid sample then we add the solvent then we have to bring these two in contact with each other and pull out the a that is sitting so originally where is the uh, chemical sitting on the solid it, it, it is with the organic matter or some such phase or it is sitting as bulk phase, pure phase. So you have to pull out, pull that out into this and it is a solid matrix. So by doing all this moisture reduction and drying agent, it becomes particles that are easily, you can mix it well with the solvent and therefore extraction efficiency is higher, okay. But in some cases, so one way of doing this is to, uh, you can just mix it, but mixing itself is not sometimes enough. So people, uh, the methods of extraction one more one older method is what is called as soxlet extraction this is the old it is a very old method um, and this is used to extract all kinds of solid matrices anything sludge soil sediment some anything any solid big, big chunk whatever you want the uh, this is a rotary evaporator as I showed you. This is a nitrogen uh, system which we looked at. Yeah, this is the what is called as a Soxlet apparatus. Mm, what we do is in this there is this small uh, thing that you see here um, on the right hand side this small thing this is a thimble here this is a sample holder okay the sample holder is like a cup you one of the other things in extraction that you solid extraction is like liquid extraction after you finish the extraction you have to separate the solid and the extract you the solid so here what they use is this thimble, what is called as a thimble is a filter, it already is a filter, it is made of filter material. So you put the solid into that and uh, you uh, then it has to be brought in contact with the, uh, the solvent. So this, this apparatus, the solvent is placed here, this is a solvent, yeah. So this solvent is placed on a heating bath and it is kept at close to its boiling point. So it starts boiling, it goes up, it goes up here, you see there is condensation, there is condensing. This thing goes up and goes up, condenses and drops down into the thimble. So it is dropping at its boiling point, close to its boiling point, very close to its boiling point. So it is hot, so it is a hot extraction. And it, and it drops down, it is now in contact with the solid and it fills up. So when it fills up, this outer layer also fills up, it fills up, it fills up. When it reaches this level, there is, you see a small uh, system here, it goes beyond that and it, it creates a suction effect and the entire uh, liquid level, the entire liquid solvent that is there in this uh, chamber is now transferred back into the main reservoir. So this happens in cycles, it takes about say 30 minutes for the boiling to happen and it drops into this thing and it fills up, when it fills up everything empties. So it is like one cycle of extraction, you are extracting it at that temperature with a certain volume of solvent for 45 minutes, then you do another one and then you do another one. So, so you can look at, it is called as a reflux of solvents and it is done for 4 to 24 hours depending on how hard the matrix is. So what is this very rigorous, very 
harsh extraction, it is high, high temperature and the solvent that you are using and it is very time consuming and it is also uh, expensive, expensive in the sense in terms of energy and all that it is uh, it is a bit laborious but once you pack it in it is done, it keeps going, it keeps going uh, round and round. So you will get uh, at the end of your process the extract is here, this is the extract, this is the extract you take out everything and uh, the extract is taken for further processing. So, in this uh, method you need uh, a large amount of solvent, you cannot do with 20 ml and 30 ml, you may need 150 ml or so because it has to evaporate, go down and uh, still needs something must be there here. So, in this kind of situations we have to use uh, rot rotary evaporator or some such. If you do not have a rotary evaporator, there is another option that is instrument that is used, it is uh, called as this, uh, this called as uh, this one, uh, so this is placed inside a water bath. This is again a reflux, the, the idea behind this is it is an evaporator basically but it does not evaporate very rapidly, what it does is it evaporates, the sample is placed here, you see there is the sample, the initial sample level may be here, in the bottom you have a small uh, attachment which is like a test tube and as you can see the graduations, if you can see these graduations are much, much smaller, the graduations here are much smaller than here. So, you can reduce it to about 1 ml, this is about 1 ml and so 250 ml is somewhere here and you are boiling it, so it goes up you can see that these do not allow the sample to just go escape, they go up and they condense, they fall back, they go up, condense, fall back, some of it escapes, the pressure becomes enough, they keep escaping. This is a very old technique is to prevent, uh, reduce the loss of analyte because one of the positive problems as I was talking about is if you rapidly evaporate for concentration, this whatever solvent will evaporate very fast because it is at boiling point. But the rate of evaporation is so fast that it will take a lot of other things and go with it. So, it co evaporation will occur and loss will occur, lot of losses will occur. So, this was seen as a way of reducing it a little bit, but uh, this is a very time consuming uh, method and it will also again not entirely uh, reduce it to whatever volume, it will reduce it to some volume here. It is the same problem as a rotary evaporator, but you, you cannot reduce it below a certain volume. So, but idea is once you get it in, inside this tube, you can take this tube and do the nitrogen blow down, so reduce it to whatever vo small volume you want. So for, uh, for solids, the other option that we have, it is a more recent method is using ultrasonic bath. Soxlate extraction is a very painful and long process to do. So uh, the new method was developed which is called ultrasonic uh, extraction. Ultrasonic extraction is takes a sample and you add all the whatever moisture reducing sodium sulphate and the solvent in it, mix it well and put it in ultrasonic bath. What does the ultrasonic bath, what it does is it, it at that frequency that is suggested, it breaks the particles and it makes it more uh, this thing. So, this ultrasonics have different enhancement of mass transfer effects and also it breaks particles. So, both these things. Uh, allow it to uh, be effective as extraction uh, methods, okay. In both these methods, once you get an extract, once you get the extract in solid phase, in so extra extraction from solid samples like soil, this it will contain a lot of things, it will contain organic matter, it can contain a lot of, so your extract typically looks, uh, um, if you are extracting from soil, the extract will look the solvent is colorless, extract will look yellow or sometimes brown, dark brown in color, which means it contains a lot of other things, some of which may be analyte of interest, some of which may not be, okay. So, we were discussing this the other day, you will call this as an interference, whether it is an interference or not is determined by you depending on what you want to analyze, okay. But if you do not want the interference, okay, so it contains the extract To remove what we call as interferences, you have to filter the sample, process the sample. So, we do what is called as a cleanup before we go any further. 
So one of the main interferences is solid, solid itself because we are not even though we use a filter thimble, the thimble uh, the filter material or even in ultrasonic extraction there is no filter, you are you still have to filter it. Um, so one way of doing this filtration is interference is uh, possible interferences, one is uh, solid, two is other uh, certain chemical groups that we are talking about okay so so there are clean up methods to remove different types of uh, different types of uh, interferences okay whatever you want we will so it essentially it looks like this so type of cleanup we have an adsorption uh, we have cleanup for uh, these are all standard methods the numbers you see here 3620 are short solid waste 846 method numbers okay these are solid waste uh, SW846 yesterday's last class we saw this solid waste 846 methods and these uh, these uh, are the type of material that is used for the cleanup. For example, you have silica gel cleanup, you have alumina cleanup, fluorescent cleanup. There are different materials. So, what happens here is it's like a filter. It's just a bed. Your sample is added in the top and allowed to go through this column. It's a filter. It it retains anything that you don't want, and depending on what you don't. So some of the some of the basic things. So it looks like this. On the right hand side, you can see in this case, this is the this is a silica gel uh, column. Silica gel is not the silica gel that you use uh, in the lab here. But it's a silica gel is used for this pr particular process, and it is not just the solid. You can see that it's a gel, and it becomes like this when you saturate it with solvent. If you add solvent, it becomes a, a liquid solid gel. And on top of it, you you add the sample. This is a sample. You can see, and the sample goes through. And you have to, if you just keep the sample, it's not enough. You have to elute the sample. And this term of elution is very specific. Elution is a term that is used in chromatography. And this we will come to chromatography in, in, in the next topic. So we are doing what is called as column chromatography here in some sense. But if it is just a filter that we are using that is filtration. But in the case of silica gel it also does what is called as uh, chromatography, liquid chromatography. It is the oldest form of chromatography which means that you have, you should have a mobile face here. You can see that there is a mobile face it is moving through. When you add this here and we will discuss chromatography uh, after this to we'll understand more. So basically you, you must have a continuous flow of this going through okay so you have various kinds of uh, clean up procedures you for cleaning up sulfur cleaning up acid base all kind of things so depending on where your sample is what you expect to be as a significant interference we remove many of these things okay we we'll come back to this um, any questions on this so far the uh, in terms of what we are uh, doing 